Hey guys, welcome to Bookish Islander. My name is Juan. I hope you're all doing very well. Today I want to talk to you about a novel that never goes out of fashion and everyone should read. 1984. Now, 1984 is a novel written by the English writer George Orwell and published in 1949. This was his last book. 1984 is a dystopian novel and it is easy, very easy to see echoes of the world we're living in today in the novel. It is better, however, if we look at Orwell's novel in its own context. If Orwell wrote the book in 1949, it means that he said it 35 years into the future. His version of the future is based on what was happening politically in Europe in the 1940s and then projected several decades ahead. He imagined the worst kind of consequences of the political totalitarianism that already existed in the 1930s and 40s. So remember fascist Italy, Nazi Germany, the Soviet Union. 1984 is often considered one of the best dystopian novels together with books such as Brave New World by Aldous Huxley or Fahrenheit 451 by Red Bradbury. Orwell's novel continues to be read and reread. Why? Because like most classics, it has stood the test of time. Not only does 1984 continue to be relevant after all these decades, but it is also a pleasurable read. But how can a book that deals with a brutal totalitarian regime be such a pleasure to read? I think that Orwell's style and his skills as a storyteller are such that if the term page turner had a better press, I would say that 1984 is a page turner. However, there is not a single spark of optimism in this novel. And yet, despite the despair and the angst, we cannot help but read on. If you live in a liberal democracy like the United States or the European Union, it is a fascinating exercise of what if. What if I lived under a totalitarian regime? To what extent would I even be aware of it? I have met people who were born in countries with uh, dictators. And only when democracy eventually came did they become aware of all the freedoms they didn't have before. Now, personally, I cannot speak from the perspective of someone who has lived in a dictatorship and reads 1984, obviously. So I will stick to my own experience as someone who has only ever experienced liberal democracies. However, when I was a lot younger um, and I read the book for the first time, I had one question in my mind. And that question was, is the regime that Orwell dreamed up a right-wing dictatorship or a left-wing totalitarian regime. Orwell himself was a man of the left, but he was as critical of the abuses exercised in the name of left-wing ideals as of those exercised from the right. He defined himself as a democratic socialist, and as such he was against any form of totalitarianism. If you're interested in Orwell's political thought, I recommend Homage to Catalonia which is an essay in which he gives his personal account of fighting on the Republican side in the Spanish Civil War. The Spanish Civil War took place between 1936 and 1939, so before World War II, and it followed an army coup supported by some reactionary forces who were against the legitimate Republican government of Spain. There is another book that crystallizes uh, Orwell's criticisms of the hard left, and that's Animal Farm, which was published in 1945. Orwell was inspired to write this book by the Russian Revolution of 1917 and the Stalinist era it ushered in the Soviet, in the Soviet Union. Now, going back to the book, the regime in which the characters live has characteristics from both the right and the left. And because of this, people of different affiliations, political affiliations the world over, find it easy to embrace it. Who was George Orwell? Because this is important. He was an English journalist. His real name was Arthur Blair. He was born in British India. This is key. And later he worked as a British policeman in Burma, which is present day Myanmar. And I think that witnessing the abuses of the metropolis, in this case, Britain, in the colonies, informed his political thought. So much so that he became starkly anti-imperialist. And it's not strange that empires are a key element of the dystopia he created in 1984. In the novel, um, the world is divided into just three huge countries, Oceania, Eurasia, and East Asia. Oceania covers the whole of the Americas, Southern Africa and Madagascar, Australia, New Zealand, territories in the Pacific, and the British Isles. Eurasia then covers all of continental Europe, all the Mediterranean islands, Anatolia, and most of present-day Russia. East Asia comprises present-day China, Korea, Japan, 
and much of India. The rest of the world, which is most of Africa, the Middle East and other parts of Asia, are all disputed territories. Oceania, Eurasia and East Asia are in constant war with each other, but the book is set in London, which is now in the province known as Airstrip 1, which of course belongs to Oceania, and Airstrip 1 is what we call Great Britain. Orwell is an English writer, you know, so he had to set the book in England. The protagonist is Winston Smith, uh, which is an everyman who becomes curious about what the world was like before the revolution that created Oceania in the first place. He resents having his every move watched by Big Brother, and that is what makes him investigate the past. Now, he's an important term that the book introduces and now we hear about it all the time in all kinds of different contexts in popular culture. Big Brother is the leader of the party that rules Oceania and it's a character that I liken to the Wizard of Oz in that everyone is in awe of him but nobody has seen him. Now, the regime spies on its citizens and always uses its propaganda to make everybody feel watched. I don't know if that sounds familiar to you. The state wants people to spy on each other Dissent or mere criticism of the government is simply not tolerated. Anyway, living in a society of those characteristics makes people paranoid about everyone. I mean, how can you get close to someone if you think that they're spying on you, possibly? Another way to control people is through language. Newspeak is the name of the propagandistic language used by the state to indoctrinate its citizens. So in 1984, the state controls, or at least tries to control, not just how people act, but how they think. There is the Ministry of Peace, which is in charge of the war, the Ministry of Plenty, which rations food, the Ministry of Truth, which controls information and rectifies the historical records to make them match the official discourse. And our protagonist, Winston, works in in that ministry. His job is actually revising old newspaper articles for information that would contradict the official discourse and remove undesirable people from photographs. Now, undesirable people, everyone who has fallen out of favor with the regime is known as an on-person. So if you think that the concept fake news is only reason, then you most definitely need to read 1984. And then finally, there's another ministry, the Ministry of Love, which deals with dissidents, real or imagined, arrests them and tries to convert them. The name of the four ministries are examples of double think. Other examples are the slogans of the only legal political party, war is peace, freedom is slavery, ignorance is strength. Going back to the protagonist, at a certain point, he meets a rebel called Julia and they become lovers. And I'm not gonna keep going on about the plot because I don't wanna spoil it for anyone. 1984 is a novel about the dangers of totalitarian regimes. It is a warning against indoctrination. It is an ode to free thought, but it is also a rollicking read. It's a hugely enjoyable novel. So I wanna know, have you read 1984 or any other books by George Orwell? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you again very soon. Bye-bye.